I'm Tassi Bangiovanni. I am an affiliated faculty member of the Philip R. Lee Institute for Health Policy Studies. I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Surgery and work clinically as a trauma surgeon and surgical intensivist at UCSF and San Francisco General. My work has long been focused on doing work with and that supports vulnerable populations. And as a surgeon, one population that I've been thinking about a lot is that of older adults, and especially vulnerable group in the perioperative period. Two things really led me to focus my research on older adults. The first was an emphasis on reducing opioid use in the postoperative period. In recent years, surgeons and many other clinician groups, along with those focused on health policy, have made substantial efforts to decrease postoperative opioid prescribing in large part because it has been shown to lead to long-term use, including misuse and death from overdose. These efforts have included a nationwide shift to adopt the use of non-opioid pain medication in what is often referred to as a multimodal pain regimen. I recognize the opportunity to improve our approach to pain control for surgical patients and as part of a team of surgical residents, attendings, and nurse practitioners, we initiated some patient-centered quality improvement projects at San Francisco General. We initiated a project to increase multimodal analgesia and decrease opioid prescribing at discharge for surgical patients. The success was overwhelming. Acetaminophen prescribing on discharge increased from 48 to 100% and ibuprofen from zero to 81%. We also reduced opioid prescribing by a third. It was clear that surgeons can be a powerful force to accelerate change and involvement of the surgical community is critical to implementation success. We also found that this project helped to mitigate disparities in opioid prescribing, especially for patients with a non-English language preference. We had discharge instructions and pain medication management instructions translated into seven additional languages and made these easily accessible in the electronic health record. However, I was able to see and study the long-term effects of efforts to adopt multimodal pain regimens. These reg regimens, including medications such as gabapentin, ibuprofen, muscle relaxants, and other centrally acting medications are often poorly tolerated in older adults due to a variety of age-related changes. In fact, many of these medications are in the Beers criteria, a list explicitly detailing potentially inappropriate medications for older adults. Not only are multimodal pain regimens not tailored to older adults, they have the potential to be harmful if adoption is not uniform or thoughtfully adapted to the patient. Observing this led me to consider the need for more tailored and age-specific interventions. General guidelines for surgical patients do not necessarily apply to older adults and may even be detrimental. Compounding the problem is that there is little consensus about how to appropriately treat postoperative pain in older adults and no national guidelines exist. Since older adults account for approximately half of all surgeries in the United States, a proportion expected to continue to rise, a deeper understanding of prescribing and use patterns for opioid sparing medication in this population is an urgent public health concern. The overall objective of my current work is to better understand and address via an evidence-based intervention, prescribing and use of postoperative pain medication in older adults. And my long-term career goal is to study and improve postoperative care and medication use in this population.